Ce programme vous est présenté par John Odrago, Nebraska Realty, à votre service depuis 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in around the world as we begin this a special series of conversations with um, representatives of uh, immigrants communities here in the United States and more specifically here in Omaha, Nebraska. My name is Frank Tucker Ebang and this program is actually presented and supported by Quazambia Media Group, which is an organization that was founded by a group of immigrants here in the United States with the goal to become a leading authority or advocate in issues that are affecting the livelihood of immigrants and people in general here in the United States. We seek to do so by providing a media platform that is going to allow people to get better education, support them, and empower them in building their communities. Once again, thank you so much for coming to this special event. We're talking about the Omaha One community. Again, my name is Frank Tucker Ibang. I have special guests today, and I would like to say welcome. And in the meantime, I will allow all my guests to say welcome in their various languages. Today, again, I want to thank our sponsor, which is Mr. John No of the John Law Enterprise here in Omaha, Nebraska. Many thanks to you uh, to make sure that this event is possible. Without further ado, I'll go ahead and introduce my guest. I have Marie Elaine representing here uh, immigrants uh, coming from Western Europe, I would say Belgium specifically. Marie Elaine, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. So, bonjour et bienvenue. I only say it in French, but we have three languages in Belgium. So. Two templates here, Marie Elaine. <laughs> thank you so much. On the side, I also have uh, Mr. Uh, his name will be Mohamed Jamal. Mohamed Jamal is representing the uh, Somali community. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. So the weather, Somali Anahai. I was born Somali. I'm Somali refugees live in Omaha, Nebraska. Thank you. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Again, I have Dr. Uh, Dr. Hassan, who is representing Hassan. here the uh, Iraqis communities here. Doctor, how are you doing today? I'm good. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, shukran li Thank Excellent. you very much. Thank you so much, sir. I also have Mr. Mungit Hignam, who is representing the Kachin community. Sir, how are you doing today? Would you say welcome to your community and the viewers here? Yes, uh, very good uh, today. Tani, ante, dezone tina, krumzuk do mjo, yongpe, kajiji do mai, omahagana ante, kaptola gailo. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I would like to welcome you. This is a very special event. We are going to have a series of conversations with uh, immigrants listening to the stories, listening to the challenges, and why not expectations and all that is to come as we uh, discuss um, uh, how integrating the communities here in Omaha is happening for uh, the people that are coming here in Nebraska. Once again, this is the Omaha One Community event. My name is Frank Tucker Ibang. Without further ado, I have this first question that I will ask to all my uh, guests today, and uh, listening to each one of them, we will evolve uh, as questions unfold. I will start with Maria Land. Maria Land, you... You immigrated to the United States um, from Belgium, but from knowing you, you traveled the world and you have experienced a lot. The question I have is, what would you tell our viewers today of what your experience as immigrants has been here in the United States and more specifically in Nebraska? Mm -hmm. So indeed, I've traveled the world. Uh, I was born and raised in Africa and I'm Belgian and I'm now from Omaha. Omaha is home. I've been here for nine years, and I immigrated as a permanent resident nine years ago. I must say that I'm, I feel comfortable. I, have, I really like Omaha. The thing for my case, I think I represent a population that people may not think about. Permanent residents, people who come with a green card, have no real support offered, contrary to other populations, refugees or um, other kinds of people who come here. Permanent residents have to integrate the community and uh, I was happy to integrate this community. I love it. I'm really involved in my community, in the neighborhood, but it's a step that I had to do. And the other thing is finding a job may not be easy for any of us whatever the status we have, because we have experience, we have an, an education from abroad, and it's not, it may not be recognized as, as such. So finding a job at the level of ex expertise we have is sometimes hard to explain and hard to find. So. Right, thank you so much, Marie-Lan. I'll ask the same question to Mr. Mungate from the Cochin community. Mm -hmm. Would you please share with our viewers and listening today, 
What has your, your experience of immigration been here in the United States and Nebraska specifically? Yeah, I've been living since 2001. Um, uh, it's, it's quite adventure, yeah. Uh, so I, I love it here. Uh, it's very close to scenery-wise, you know, um, it's close to our country. So I mean, where I, you know, grew up. But uh, yes, um, in, uh, in our community here, uh, we have a lot of hardship as well. Uh, recently, uh, since the Obama is uh, the break up uh, uh, war zone right now. Um, so a lot of community have an impact as well. So, um, but uh, I want to talk on our, our community uh, hardship on the education and then also the immigration status uh, wise, yeah. Excellent, thank you so much, sir. Um, uh, Dr. Assad, right? Yeah. I yes, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. So uh, would you please share with us your experience as an immigrant in the United States and more specifically how this has impacted your ability to integrate the community here? Well, um, actually, I was, I was born here in uh, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, 1960. But uh, I'm working with refugees from 2019. I joined this uh, organization, MLCDC, here in uh, Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, we, we are, you know, we're trying to help uh, um, this refugees uh, refugees here we started with uh, uh, with a program that uh, let them uh, do a daycare in their home so they they must start their daycare, daycare uh, at their home but there there is some you know uh, specific things they must be less than five years here they have lots of uh, limited uh, things to do so um, uh, then after that uh, in my experience, from 2019 until now, 2022, we 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 realized that um, refugees um, uh, lack the the knowledge for their finances. So we started uh, with the financial education classes. We have uh, uh, it's a program for five classes. The first one is about budgeting, how to do their budget. I don't want to go this is a big uh, program. But uh, the first one is budgeting. The th second class is about loan and credit. And there's also how to buy a car, what percentage of uh, your salary to put to buy a car or lease a car, which one is better. And then also there's housing, how to do the mortgage, where to go, how to get a loan, how, uh, all these. And the, the, fourth, uh, the fourth class, the fifth class is the uh, final one, which is about how to prepare for retirement, how to, do their, uh, to build your assets. This, uh, this is where we are uh, doing now. And also Muhammad is, is doing this with us. So um, this is what we do. Uh, the last program we have. Uh, right. Excellent. Thank you so much, Doctor. And uh, I'll return uh, again to Mr. Muhammad Jamal. Uh, sir, would you please share with our viewers today uh, what has your experience as an immigrant been here in the United States in terms of how has this impacted your ability to fully integrate the communities or the people you know? Uh, thank you so much. My name is Muhammad. I'm from Somalia. And I'm, I just moved from Nebraska for uh, eight years ago. The reason I was moved when I landed the United when I came to United States, I landed in Minneapolis. It's a big city, so I was unable to get a job. So I moved to Nebraska because Nebraska is, you know, easy for to get a job, especially the meat companies. So the, that's why a lot of Somalis they come in through Nebraska because the, when they come to United States, some of them they doesn't have any background education, right. so they move to Nebraska to get a, a quick job. Because if you move, like, if they land in like Seattle or Chicago, or Minneapolis, or other big cities, it's very difficult for them to get a job. So that's the reason they move in Nebraska. And they, they are very, uh, they are very grateful being here. They are very happy. They are very successful. Some of them they become ownership housing. Some they become open their own business. So even Nebraska, let's go back. A uh, small thing I want to mention, like getting a driver license. Nebraska is very easy than other states. Right. So that's why many people are coming. And also, uh, my personality, I founded an organization in 2020. It's called East African Development Association of Nebraska. I founded the idea when I founded the problem between my people and other people. I just built a bridge between the other organizations and my community. So that community now is helping for a lot of refugees. I work for Assad. I work at different organizations around yes. Nebraska. And people are very excited being a leadership for this community and this is what uh, most people are um, as I said uh, they work for meat companies and, and background education was not 
having good education. That's why they moved from Nebraska right. and start a new life. And they're very excited, especially Omaha is, is a good city. I raised my kids, and I don't think I will move out to different cities. <laughs> yes, nice. That is certainly <laughs> good you. to hear. So yeah. once again, thank you so much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, to our viewers tuning in again, this is the Omaha One Community event, a series of conversations with uh, uh, immigrants and leaders within the immigrants communities here in Omaha, Nebraska. We are going to talk about some of the questions, issues, experiences, overall stories of those people here um, in Nebraska and hopefully uh, touch a little bit of uh, hearts out there uh, so that we can all uh, make sure that their integration in the community is as smooth as possible. To that effect, it is important to remind that um, since the beginning of humanities, people have traveled the world, immigrated for various reasons. Bottom line is people are looking for better living conditions for their families, for themselves, and the world is huge, immensely built with resources that should allow everybody, everybody, and I mean everybody in the world, to achieve those goals of having a better life. On that note, my second question is really talking about access to resources. Marie Lynn, I know that in the state of Nebraska and certainly your states around the country, there are resources, I would say a plethora of resources available in communities to help with health care, housing, education, employment. What would you say specifically and, and perhaps personally has been your experience with access to resources um, for you, people in your community, uh, to, 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 let's say, uh, smoothen their stay or integration in the community here in Nebraska? Well, as I said, my case is different. And I was, I'm lucky that I came to join my husband who had found a job here and had been here for a while in this country. So with regard to access to resources, we had to build a network in Nebraska, but my husband had a network and knew a lot of things from his experience around the country, which means that there are resources available. And I would say that because of my involvement with the refugee community, I used to work in adult education at Metro Community College, organizing English classes and GED classes. I've learned a lot about all those big or small organizations who help refugees. And we try to really uh, build a network and offer all those resources to the refugees, to our students, because you have so many and we don't know them all, but there are a lot. And if I may say something about the Yates right. Illuminates project, because you know about it, we met the first time about the Yates Illuminates. I don't know if you know about Yates Illuminates. Yeah, yeah. This project is being developed to help refugees and immigrants and the entire community to have access to all kinds of resources in one location. And this is what we dreamt about when we wanted to build, uh, to buy that old elementary school here in Gifford Park neighborhood. So I think this is important to have all those resources available and to really explain to the people, to the immigrants, to the refugees, what they need and where they can find help and support in all the fields they need. Excellent. Dr. Assad, same question. Yeah. Um, you know, when I worked with the, we were working in, in Lincoln and Omaha, and there's a lot of sensors organizations in Lincoln, um, uh, huge support for refugees. Some of them are, are giving food every day, not just food, everything every day. And the people can come, the, the same people can come every day to take whatever they want. I was astonished to this, you know, organization or, or center, it's just called HELP. And there's also another organization which is, you know, giving food like two times a week or something. And there's also uh, uh, like a cafe or a restaurant, they are giving uh, free food, uh, breakfast, lunch, and, and, and even uh, supper dinner f free for every refugee and that's that was great you know and, and uh, we don't ha have like this uh, in, in Omaha but we have like the heart ministry center they also give food like uh, once or twice a week so uh, and um, and for us we do the education we try to do the education for people so uh, we, we were we have a lot of uh, students in, in, in Lincoln 
and we try to, to help them to do daycare in their home. But the, the most important thing, they lack the, the language. And one of the, you know, uh, they break your heart because one, one lady was, was crying because she cannot read and she cannot write her own language in, in her own language. So that was, you know, difficult. We tried to, to, to find an interpreter to do this and, and uh, they're educated and they graduated from the school, but they, they need support. And uh, maybe I will talk about uh, the people, Iraqi people later when uh, they okay. have time. Yeah. Excellent. Mr. Mohammed, um, I, I know you, you did mention that um, uh, probably the, the Somali community is one of, you know, I would say one of the largest and fastly growing communities here in Nebraska. So it, it, access to resources has always been one of the key pointers into um, the issues that um, uh, hinder the integration and complete integration of immigrants in their different communities. What would you say has been your sentiment about access to resources for your communities uh, here in Nebraska? What specifically would you point out as you know, a, a specific resource that you've lacked or you want to see an improvement on? Or what, what would you point out? Uh, thanks so much for that question. Uh, basically, the problem uh, people uh, mention about resource exercise, how people can get resource. Uh, there is a problem between that because people, they have a body language. The communication is very low. So the, the resource, there is a lot of resource around Omaha. So when I found it, people always cry saying, these people, they don't like me. I'm a refugee. But I, I founded this organization and I went to those organizations, meet them and explain them. And they accepted us to ex have access like uh, the resource, like rent assistance was a big huge in my community. They didn't know where they can get a rent assistance when they get when they lost a job or when they broke the vehicle, people lost their jobs. They can drive with this uh, for a job. So some those families they used to have problem getting a note from the landlord and they some of them they get a eviction note. So I found it a way these people can get help. So I established a program called Match is in Omaha. They support like people who doesn't have any rent assistance. So I found that program in the community, and now uh, last 2021, we support like 75 families, that program. So food pantry, we open food pantry, because people always say, oh, people don't want to give me a food, but they never go and talk to them, Heartland Food, uh, food, uh, Heartland food Pantry. I right. meet them, and they accept a partnership with us. So I believe the problem people facing it is challenge the language part of it. So the main concern of people now, they're talking about housing issue. That's what I will mention about the housing is the one of the big issue of the community. And some of the, they live in like uh, same apartment, like low income families, more than 20 years, and they okay. still keep living there. So that's the main problem I can mention okay. for the- Excellent. Yeah. Mr. Mugit, same question. What has been some of the issues and, you know, with regards to access to resources with the Kachin community here? Yeah, um, I would like to uh, uh, point out to the main uh, issue right now yes. uh, in our community is the education. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we have a lot of kids and um, all the immigrants, you know, the older uh, generation, they are, I mean, most of them, they can speak, you know, English um, and they can read properly. Yes. And so, uh, a very hardship on a, a system because of the pandemic. Of course, like it's going to affect to every community, I believe. But in but I, I really uh, see on uh, the education uh, in our community have a super impact. Uh, so I I would really you know if uh, we could get help on like tutoring, you know how to access to the education, uh, substituting uh, the if there's no you know school program uh, available. And then you know, th those kind of things, yeah, I would like to, you know, uh, get the access to it you know, to help on our, our community as well. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, um, I, I really appreciate that you've pointed out some, some of the issues uh, which I believe uh, many communities of immigrants here uh, can, can identify as uh, potentially um, areas of opportunities or interest to be worked on, of course, to facilitate their integration in the community. Uh, I hope that our viewers uh, have taken the time to, to listen to these um, uh, gentlemen and ladies here uh, presenting to us what the experience of the immigrant has been here in Omaha, Nebraska, more personally and also as a community. Um, I know the time is, is running out for us to get there, but I still have a few questions for my guests here. Uh, you all pointed out the, the importance of language acquisition. 
and and I can I can I can join you on that that it's it's a it's a major issue. What would you say? Uh, I'll, and I'll go with you, Doctor Assad. What would you say uh, has been? Or, or what do you say in your community you've been able to achieve uh, in order to help out, in order to uh, um, facilitate um, access to uh, language, uh, the English language with the, the Iraqis here in, in, in Nebraska? Yeah. Well, um, I'll talk about Iraqis. Uh, there are three groups came to the United States, came to Nebraska. The first group is from the big cities, and they, they, they are well educated, they speak English, and, and they have business, they just started business here, like car dealers, like doctors, like uh, uh, teaching in the universities. But there's other people, other groups, like Kurdish and the Yazidis, and they, they had a lot of, you know, uh, problems in Iraq. They were attacked by terrorists, and the, the, the men were killed, and the, the boys were killed, just the women, and the, the girls were sold in the, in the market, and they, they came here. With a, you know, in, in their culture, the man is working and he's bringing the money, and the the woman just you know raising kids and do all the stuff at at home. So when she comes here without a husband, without a boy to help her, she suffered a lot. And 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 those people, you know, they went into misery. And and there's a lot of uh, videos on on YouTube showing this. But nobody, you know, just few people knows about it. Right. And then when we, when we try to, to teach them, they don't even uh, can write or, or read or whatever. And they try to work to support the family. So it's, it's very difficult. We try to, to you know, to talk to, uh, to them in their language. We, we, we start to educate them, uh, you know, because they didn't go to school before. They didn't know us, you know, sit on a chair for two hours. And that was very difficult for them. So we tried, we tried, we tried, and, and we graduated many people like uh, in, in, in um, uh, Lincoln. It's like, like 50 people were graduated from our classes. And we tried to teach them. And, and until now, we are trying to be in contact with them if they need anything. It doesn't matter if it's about education or something else, because we, we and I tried to bring somebody to talk in this right. program, but because of the time, I didn't find it. We, we certainly will get there. Uh, Mr. Muhammad, very quickly, two questions for you, and very, very quickly for our viewers here. I know, I know you're a leader within your community. What would you say is very unique to the people of Somali here in, in Nebraska? And also about that question about language. What do you do in your community to help facilitate language access? Acquisition. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, as he mentioned, one of my brother, there is a, a the parents who moved to the United States. Some of them they don't have any background education, and their kids when they send to school, so nobody knows the grade. You know, the point is where these kids going up. Sometimes in, even when OBS call the, uh, something about the student, sometimes the student interpreted for the parents, and they cheating, saying, "Hey, he's saying uh, my teacher saying good things about me." Right. While maybe they complain about him, so that's the body language. So I would say like uh, avoiding like more touring programs. Right. So if the OBS or State Nebraska Department they can offer more after school program, or like touring program or mentoring program, so maybe those kids can get more uh, improving their education. Right. So that's what I would say because this is me. This is a big problem uh, for the language. Excellent. And also the unique thing I would say is the snow. You know, people are having a traveling when the snow. People like they come from like 90 degree weather yes. every day. We sh seven days a week we take like uh, like t-shirt in the streets. So this is one of the challenge. Some of them they get like the pressure when the winter yes. come and the, you know the days become a short. And you know they have a seven kids, eight kids, and they're working for the single mothers. Right. As the mission, as I say, is true. A lot of men died the war in Somalia. So the families who came here is the mother, single mother, have seven, eight kids. So that's like challenging for them that daycare. Some of them they don't qualify to get a daycare. Yes. So they have challenging for that the winter time. That will be a big challenge for them. This is. Something for new for us. Definitely for tough. Yeah. Definitely tough. And, yeah. and thank you so much for sharing that for yeah. our viewers. Quickly, Maria Land, what would you what would you point out for these communities to be, um, um, let's say, a strategy or an idea to facilitate language acquisition? I know you know more about that. 
Well, yeah, my first profession is teaching foreign languages, among others, English. So I think what we need to do here in Omaha is offer more targeted English classes. You have different levels. Some people come without knowing anything. They need basic English, survival English, how to go to the grocery, how to go to the administration. Then you get to the medical care, because that's hard. That's the hardest part of a language acquisition. But you also have those people who come with an education, they already know English, they need specific targeted English, business English, medical English. And I think we need to offer more English classes to target groups at a low or at no cost. Excellent. Marilyn, thank you so much. I know time is running out here. Mr. Cochin, quick question here. Yes. And this is, this is because I haven't heard about this community before. One mm -hmm. unique thing about the Cochin community here. All right, Cochin, uh, Cochin as uh, we are unique as, uh, you know, when you are introducing, like, let's say you are Cochin, then you and I are related. Uh, when we, you know, introduce you this person, then, oh, you're my brother. Right. Or you're my, like, brother-in-law. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, uncle, you know, just like that, yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, we call, like, triangle. Uh, anytime when you heard Kachin, those Kachin are related. Uh, uh, just that's the unique part, and um, um, yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. I know, I know we, we can certainly spend a whole day here talking about all this and have our people discover more uh, about us. But time, again, is of essence. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank uh, all of you uh, for making the time to come here to this series. I know we'll have more time to talk about this. I want to thank, again, our sponsor, Mr. John No Enterprises. I want to thank the Wise Family and CEE -E, uh, to help this, uh, to make this event uh, possible. I really hope that as we go forward, we'll have more time and share with our viewers about the Omaha One community. Once again, my name is Frank Tucker Bang. It was a pleasure. Until next time, bye-bye. Ce programme vous est présenté par John Odrago, Nebraska Realty, à votre service depuis 2019.